Yes. Ah, there you are. Now then, good news, Lucy. Yes. Yes. Now, although Mr. Peel says that most of the furniture must be sold, you may choose one or two favourite pieces to keep until you're old enough to need them. And you can take some of the smaller things away with you now, but not too many, mind. How many? Oh, I think they should all go into this trunk. I'd like to take everything. But you won't need everything. You'll be much too busy doing things with your cousins. No, I won't. Which you'll enjoy once you've got to know them. I don't want to know them. <laughs> so that's... that's a silly thing to say. You know, Lucy, I think it's very important that you think positively about this move, particularly as your Aunt Gwen will be here shortly. But I don't want to move! Well, I'm afraid we don't have much choice about that. You see, Mr. Peel says that the new owner wants to move in before the end of the week. Ah, uh, I think that's Mrs. Belling. I must, uh, I must just go and have a quiet word with her. Good morning, Mrs. Belling. It's a lovely day for it, isn't it? Indeed it is, yes. Now, she is going to be all right, isn't she? Oh, of course she is. At least she'll be spending Christmas with her family. Mm, well, her family is just the thing she's not used to, Vicar. She's not been brought up like other children. Well, there isn't really any alternative, is there, Mrs. Belling? Hmm? No, Vicar. I'll go and see how she's bearing up. Fine, fine. Ah, this must be them now. Uh, good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Long, I presume. Uh, quite a nice day for it. I'm so sorry we have to rush away like this, but we didn't leave till later when, when we thought, and then there was that dreadful accident at Mill Hill, or was it Finchley? And of course, the children are just dying to eat Lucy. You will be this much. This must be such an upheaval for you, Lucy, dear. What with poor Aunt Olive going and now this move. There must be sort of dozens of questions you want to ask. And, you know, I did tell you about the children, didn't I? Yeah. Yes. Well, I do hope you like pop music because they're uh, simply <laughs> And Patrick's yeah. just joined the Young Socialists. Actually, Rachel's keen to join too. But I told her to stick to reading feminist pamphlets still after the exams. <laughs> Oh, what a fish of Mika! Where are you once again? Oh, sorry. Bye bye, Lucy. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks so much for everything. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Lucy. Be a good girl. Don't forget to ride, Lucy. <laughs> oh. He's not a very good driver, is he? He's not. Bye! Well, you and Rachel should get on like a house on fire, because your Aunt Olive used to be a suffragette, didn't she? I do wish I could get her to wear pretty clothes like you, but she wears those jeans like a second skin. There. When we finished with this, you'll be the bearer of every ball. Are you ready to try it on? No, anyway, Rachel's been outnumbered by the boys up to now. Must be too kind of to the boy. We're home. Oh, come here, you horror. What have I told you about pinching my things? Oh, sorry, Pete. Hello, my name's Rachel. And I'm Patrick. You can call me Patrick, all right? Yeah, excuse me. Turkey is Bill. That's the way girls are supposed Bill. to dress, Bill. You remember, Rachel, your sister wore a frock once. Now, everybody in. I don't want a house full of pneumonia. Yeah, uh, Gwen, come on. Oh. Yeah, Bill, Patrick, come on, help me with the cases. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Looks like my Aunt Olive's house. Yes, I fancy you noticing that. It was built about the same period, you know. Of course, none of my three would have noticed. Oh, Oh, shut up. You have a gamble with the cargo. Yeah. Oh, if I've left it back. You run on it, I'm just going to park the car in the upstairs and show her everything. Oh, Bill. Have you no manners? Go and join your brother. Are you so good? Yeah, do as you are told. Ah, Rachel. Uh, take Lucy away from you. Oh, good idea, Bill. Come on, Lucy. Let's escape. Pete says the traffic was ghastly. Pete? No, oh, my father. We've always called him Pete and my mother Gwen. It's much less formal, isn't it? Oh, yes. We're really into democratic informality and family relationships. Anyway, come in. This is us. Us? Hmm. I've emptied the two top drawers of the chest of drawers, and you can have one side of the wardrobe. And that's my bed over there, but we can swap if you want to sleep next to the window. Pete really worked hard in this room. Mm. What's the matter? I'm just used to sleeping alone, that's all. Well, I was. So Gwen pointed out this was real family democracy in action. What's that? Nothing. What do you do with it? You just keep it carefully. Don't you have a spare room? Yes, but it's uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. You can't live in it. Oh. May I see it, please? Well, there you are. Now do you know why no one can sleep here? Still, by the time Pete's finished with it, he won't recognise it. Full of African heads and primitive weapons. It always is. What was wrong with it as it was? Well, just look at that design. Not to give anyone nightmares. I like it. You do? Won't go well in a modern house, though, would it? But this house is Victorian. Your father said so. It doesn't have to have modern rooms. He loves modernising old houses. He's wonderful at it. He's got some great ideas for in here. 